This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin proof of reserves. What is proof of reserves? It's a way for a company to demonstrate that they hold as much Bitcoin as they claim to. And if you're holding any Bitcoin with that company, it's something that you should be really interested in. Full reserve means that there's enough Bitcoin for every customer to withdraw their Bitcoin at the same time. Partially or fractionally reserved means there's not enough Bitcoin for every customer to withdraw their Bitcoin at the same time. Remember that all modern fiat banks are fractionally reserved by design. They typically hold only 10 cents for every dollar that they tell customers that they have, and then they lend out the other 90 cents, which increases the money supply and hurts the purchasing power of savers who are saving money with that bank. Such a great system. That's why we get bank runs like Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic Bank which we had bank runs for in 2023. Fortunately, we have Bitcoin now, but things can still obviously go wrong. Now, what can go wrong if you allow someone else to hold your Bitcoin for you? You might end up with paper Bitcoin in the system where they tell you that they're holding, for example, one Bitcoin for you, but they don't actually have that one Bitcoin, or they don't have enough Bitcoin to make everyone whole if everyone chooses to withdraw their Bitcoin at the same time. You also have rehypothecation. They may lend out your Bitcoin to someone else and that someone else might lose it or that someone else might lend it out again to someone else who loses it. For example, when it filed for bankruptcy, FTX was missing over $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin that it said it had, but that it did not. That was paper Bitcoin. It was Bitcoin payables to the customers or Bitcoin IOUs, however you want to call it. And it was probably the result of rehypothecation where FTX was lending out your Bitcoin to Genesis, who lent it out to Three Arrows Capital, who lost it doing stupid things. I'll link to this balance sheet in the description notes below, but here we can see that in terms of Bitcoin, FTX had one point, call it $1.6 billion worth of customer payables. In other words, Bitcoin that they owned, that they owed customers, and then they only had $1 million worth of Bitcoin to make all of those customers whole. So they had a huge, a huge deficit. So why not just have everyone hold their Bitcoin in cold storage in a form of self-custody? It really is a great idea. It's an ideal to be strived for. Self-custody is easy for your average adult, believe it or not. If you can drive a car, you can learn how to use a hardware wallet like the cold card or the Blockstream Jade to store your Bitcoin private keys. But not everyone can self-custody. Jimmy Carter at 100 cannot self-custody. Jimmy Smith at one obviously can't self-custody. Maybe neither of them have family or friends who desire to and can help them out with this either. MicroStrategy is another example. MicroStrategy cannot legally keep its Bitcoin on a hardware wallet or its private keys on a hardware wallet under Michael Saylor's bed. That's just not how things are done in the US. That's not how publicly traded companies work. And the lawyers, the accountants, and the regulators would never sign off on something like that. Now you and I can and should keep our Bitcoin in self-custody if we want to be fully sovereign Bitcoiners, and we should encourage everyone we know to do the same, but still not everyone can or will. That's not ideal, but it's important to accept that that's the reality of the situation. BlackRock itself is another example of an entity that legally needs to use a custodian. In this case, they're using Coinbase Custody. Wouldn't it be great if Coinbase and Coinbase Custody did a proof of reserves, or it'd be even better if BlackRock moved their Bitcoin to a responsible custodian like River Financial that actually does provide proof of reserves. If an exchange is not holding as much Bitcoin as it claims to be holding, then it has effectively created paper Bitcoin, which may contribute to Bitcoin price suppression. No Bitcoiner wants that. And that's why it's important for people like you and me who do fully self-custody to still have a dog in this race and to be concerned about the creation of paper Bitcoin. If you're finding this video helpful, I'll just pause here to ask you to help to support this channel's mission. Hit the subscribe button. That really does help with the algorithm. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video. Share this video with a friend or family member. And then there are also monetary ways to help. You can leave a thanks, also called a super thanks or a tip. You can see that button below this video. You can also join the channel. You can click the join button after you click the subscribe button. I'll also put some links in the description notes below. You can become a channel subscriber. I especially like those last two items, but YouTube likes them even more and promotes my channel more when it sees people sending tips and joining. That's how Google tries to beat its quarterly earnings every quarter. I like this tweet from Alex Leishman, who is the CEO and CTO over at River. Bitcoiners should demand a future where every sat stored with a custodian is accounted for with a proof of reserves. This is almost as important as running a full node. It's our responsibility to enforce the 21 million. 
Here's an example from River of how much Bitcoin on exchanges has been shown, has gone through proof of reserves, and how much has not. So as of September 2024, there are 3.2 million Bitcoin BTC sitting on exchanges, Bitcoin exchanges, crypto exchanges, and of that, only 37.2% we're showing proof of reserves. Companies like River, which is really the leader in the space in terms of proof of reserves, Binance, Bitfinex, BitMEX, et cetera. And then 62, 63% were not showing proof of reserves. This includes Coinbase Custody and all that BlackRock, all those BlackRock coins. So Brian Armstrong, please get your act together. This is really unacceptable. You guys have been around since 2013 or whatever. Is your Bitcoin being lent out by the exchange that you left it on? Is your custodian running fractional reserve? If so, these problems will almost certainly show up on a proof of reserves test. If your exchange or custodian does not offer proof of reserves, it's probably time to withdraw your Bitcoin to self-custody. This is the best solution, obviously, or at least move it to a different company like River Financial that does offer proof of reserves. This is how River talks about its proof of reserves. Full reserve custody means that all the Bitcoin you hold on River is securely stored in cold storage and never lent out or used elsewhere. In other words, it's not being lent out or rehypothecated, and it's also fully preserved. With River proof of reserves, we're giving you proof every month, once a month, I add, that your Bitcoin is held in full reserve. This is how it works. You have two sides of the balance sheet. You first have proof of assets. Assets consist of all the reserves and institution holds. For a proof of assets, an institution simply publishes a full list of all the addresses they control, and because the blockchain is open, anyone can view these. To prove that an exchange is the true owner of the addresses it publishes, it may provide an attestation, such as a transaction from its address that follows a predefined formula. That's the proof of assets side of proof of reserves. The proof of liabilities, liabilities are just all the deposits that are owed to customers. These are liabilities of River itself because it needs to pay the customers if they ask for their Bitcoin. For proof of for a proof of liabilities, an institution publishes a list of all liabilities owed to customers. However, to protect user privacy, data structures known as Merkle sum trees are used. And we're not going to go into the details of that today. I also like this diagram that River provided how proof of reserves works. You have proof of assets, the exchange publish the exchange publishes its ad addresses. Total assets are determined by adding up all the balances. And then the, on the proof of liability side, the exchange arranges its liabilities in a Merkle tree structure. User balances are represented as leaves of the Merkle tree. To maintain privacy, each individual user is only given the information needed to get their account balance. And this is something you can do in your River account, so I'm going to show you how to do. And then if total assets exceeds or is at least equal to total liabilities, then you have a good proof of reserves. And if it's if they're one to one as they are here, then the reserve ratio we would say is 100%. But it looks like River normally keeps a little bit more assets than it has liability. So it's in practice, it's a little higher than this. So if you have a River account and if you have Bitcoin in there, you can do a proof of reserves. I'm not currently sitting with Bitcoin in here as of October 1st. And um, so I won't be able to show you the full version of it, but you basically go to profile and settings, you click on security, and then you click on proof of reserves. Last updated October 1st, 2024, verify our, res our reserves with a Bitcoin transaction. So this proves here that they have over 100% reserve ratio. How do we do this? First of all, we verify the assets. We can click here. They have 13,817 Bitcoin. Basically, we can click here and this will take us to a transaction that was done on the blockchain. I believe I have it right here. And this is to prove that they can spend from this multi-sig address. So here's an example where they're spending just a few sats here. Most of the money, most of the Bitcoin is going back to the uh, the change address. It's going back to the original address. So on the left here, we have the inputs to the Bitcoin transaction. We have the outputs. The output, one of them, a small amount is just being sent somewhere to prove that you can, they can spend. And then the rest is going back into that address. If we click on this address over here, we can see that the total is uh, 13,867 unspend Bitcoin be sitting right there. And then we can go down here and look. And again, we're using mempool.space, which is a completely different company. It's a third party that River presumably has no influence over. This is just all being taken from the Bitcoin blockchain by the mempool.space node. You can also run your own node and use a, a your own instance of mempool. But basically, if we go here, we look on October 1st, 2024, and it shows that this Bitcoin address on the public 
blockchain was holding a bit more than 13,817 Bitcoin. If we go back, we can see that's how many are right here. So let's just finish that again. We first view the transaction, we verify the inputs and outputs, we scroll down, and then they tell us how much one output on the right hand side should be. We can see right there that that number is the same 0 0.0789 You have the input address, you have the output address, etc. We click continue. Uh, you can view the address below. We already did that. You verify the balance history. You can scroll down and look at the balance on October 1st, 2024, which as we said was 13,817 plus. So that's basically how you verify Rivers assets. And that's being verified through a an actual Bitcoin transaction that's being done publicly on the public blockchain. Now, in terms of the liabilities, this is the Bitcoin that River owes to customers. I was not holding any Bitcoin, obviously, in this account on October 1st, which shows why I have a Bitcoin balance of zero here. My Bitcoin's in self-custody, but let's take a look here. And if you're holding any Bitcoin with River, you'll be able to see, uh, actually verify that your balance is part of this. We can click verify liabilities. And then there are two ways of doing it. You can verify on River. There's also a way, if you're a little bit more technical, to do it. So I'd encourage you to do that. And River itself is encouraging all of its customers to do this. And the more people who do this, the more proof we have and the more confidence we have that Bitcoin, that I'm sorry, that River is holding enough Bitcoin for their customers. We already looked at this. In terms of the transaction that River sends to prove that they control that multi-sig address, they do it in a special way that cannot be gamed. And I recorded that here. River proves wallet ownership by sending a transaction with a predetermined amount on the Bitcoin network. And River doesn't get to determine this amount because otherwise that would enable them to fudge some things. The amount of the transaction is determined by taking the smallest seven digits from the largest output of the Coinbase transaction, the first transaction from a block selected for the monthly proof of reserves report. So that's how they decide how much Bitcoin to send right here. That's where this number comes from. If you want to go a little more deeply into the technical technical details surrounding verifying proof of liabilities, I'll link to Alex's video here in the description notes below where, where he shows you how to do it for more technical users. As Alex points out, proof of reserves is not perfect, but it does ensure that insolvency, in other words, not having enough Bitcoin, is the result of explicit off the books deception and not part of the normal course of operations. If you're doing everything above board, you shouldn't have a problem with doing proof of reserves. It also brings public eyeballs to custodians, assets, and liabilities. Perfect should not be the enemy of the good. And as you all know, I love that phrase. Here's the best way to do proof of reserves for your own family's Bitcoin. Run your own node, maybe using Start9 or just downloading Bitcoin Core uh, on a laptop. Verify your own Bitcoin using that node. Connect, download the Sparrow wallet and connect it to your node. And then hold your own private keys on a hardware wallet like the cold card or Blockstream Jade that's connected to the Sparrow wallet. And if you're holding Bitcoin with a company that does not offer proof of reserves, for example, Coinbase these days, it's time to withdraw to self-custody or switch to a custodian like River that does offer proof of reserves. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.